Okay. So I woke up this morning and it was a lovely autumn morn. I walked outside and it was cold, but not too cold, but hot, but not too hot. You know what I mean? It's like in the middle of both of those extremes. And I had a lovely breakfast. It was a French croissant. It was very buttery and it tasted delicious in my tummy. But then I found this tucked away underneath my toaster. One piece. Top secret information from Wano to the end of the story. Now listen. I'm not a forensic expert, nor am I familiar with the inner machinations of the toaster goblins, but there is a 99% chance that this is totally legit. Let's check it out. Oh man, we're gonna find out if Eneru freaking awakens Ranos and, and, and Laugh Tail and everything, and, and what's going on with the Yonko, and if Whitebeard comes back from the grave, and... It's... It's... It's just darkness. It's just... It's all darkness. See what I did there? See what it, because Blackbeard's power is darkness, so the end of the story is, okay. So, um, let's talk today about Blackbeard's saga. That's right, saga. See, I know right now in the story, we're in the, the Yonko saga, you know, where the Straw Hats have to go up against Big Mom and Kaido, and right now it's Big Mom and Kaido. Uh, but what about Blackbeard? He's a Yonko too. Shanks, yeah, let's put him off to the side right now, okay? So, you know, Blackbeard's begun to move uh, in the last few chapters after the whole big reveal that the Shishibukai system has been abolished. Uh, right after finding out this information, Blackbeard sort of is just like, well, if the Marines are gonna pick him up anyway, then I guess I gotta get to him first. Come on, man, let's get going. So Blackbeard heads out to sea. Um, not sure what particular uh, warlord he's going to go and try to recruit. That's what I guess I got from that, you know, that exchange there. He's just like, well, the warlords are no longer working for the government. Rather, the government's trying to go and bring them in and throw them into Impal Down. Blackbeard is, of course, an, an opportunist in that situation. He's just like, well, you know, if they're just gonna go back to being regular pirates, maybe I can recruit a few to come over to my side because you got to give Blackbeard that. Blackbeard's always really good at looking at a good opportunity to strengthen his crew. All right. And you look at that big thing he did just to get into Impel Down to get into level six. He's like, okay, wait a second here. <laughs> Say, ha, ha, ha. You mean to tell me the government threw all these really strong pirates into the same place, level six Impel Down? And he's like, yeah, they did that. I'm like, all right, well... Let's see what we can do about that. And he crafted this whole plan to become a member of the Warlords himself just so he can gain access to Impel Down and he can get down to level 6 and he can free everybody, okay? So he's definitely somebody that would be like, all right, I want to get some Warlords on my crew, all right? Um, I don't really see... I don't particularly see Mihawk doing that. I also don't particularly see Boa Hancock doing that at all. Um, especially since I believe it was public knowledge, it was revealed in the newspaper that Blackbeard captured Ace that began the whole thing at Marineford, right? That's public knowledge, if I'm not mistaken, because that's the whole thing that Luffy saw when he was um, visiting um, Granny Neon at, uh, you know, Amazon Lily. They read the paper. He's like, Blackbeard captured Ace. He's an impel down, awaiting to be executed at Marineford. So if Boa knows that information, there's no way she would go with Blackbeard. Um, Weevil is interesting um because no no because blackbeard's the one that killed whitebeard so even if i was gonna say even if you got rid of uh Bakin, if Bakin was gone and it was just you know weevil himself just like oh my mama's gone i don't know what to do now and blackbeard showed up he's like no he would he, he hates blackbeard regardless of his mother's influence or not so there's no way that would happen so i guess by process of elimination i guess blackbeard's going after buggy <laughs> that Oh my god, that would be great. Wouldn't that be weird? That would just be weird. It's like, it's like, we thought it was weird enough that Buggy became a member of the Warlords to begin with. Maybe you didn't think that was weird, but it's a moment where it's like, okay, we start off with this bumbling clown pirate in the East Blue, and then he goes on these haphazard adventures through the Grand Line, trying to find the Straw Hats, trying to find Captain John's treasure, ends up in Impel Down, then becomes a Warlord, and then somehow ends up allying with Blackbeard, that would be crazy, right? Well, anyway, 
Definitely Blackbeard's planning something here for the longer game, okay? Um, right now, he's just kind of scouring the seas, looking for strong fruits. Um, he knows something big is coming, just like Doflamingo saw something big was coming, just as I'm sure Shanks did. I think that's the whole reason Shanks went to the Gorosei. Um, you know, Doflamingo's in level 6 right now, and he's just laughing away at the articles in the newspaper, like, it's coming! This throne war, this big epic battle for the, the One Piece, it, it, it's coming, I can feel feel it, you know. Blackbeard feels that very much too. And so, um, I've had a few theories regarding this. One such theory was that Blackbeard, you know, he definitely has a mole, or he has somebody in Wano that's feeding him information about what's going on in this isolated country. That's already been established. So, I'm thinking, you know, this would be kind of like a little bit of a rehash with what happened at Marineford, but, you know, Blackbeard keeps a tab on what's going on in Wano, he waits until this big epic battle between the Straw Hats and Kaido, and also Big Mom is included in there, the Scabbards are included in there, the Heart Pirates are included in there. Blackbeard just waits until this big epic battle is, is over, and Wano is probably going to be looking pretty sorry in that after this big epic battle is finished. At least Onigashima is probably going to be in ruins after this whole thing. And so Blackbeard can just show up at the 11th hour and just be like, oh, I'm gonna steal Kaido's dragon fruit, or I'm gonna steal Big Mom's soul soul fruit, or he could do something else in a, in a major way. He could steal one of the Poneglyphs that Kaido had this whole time. Like, who knows? Like, so, he's definitely gonna get involved there, I believe, in Wano, at least near the ending stages of it, in, in some way or form, right? And then that's gonna set things up to be like, okay, we had the whole thing with Totland and Big Mom, then we had the whole arc at Wano with Kaido, and now it's up against Blackbeard because Shanks is not going to be an enemy of the Straw Hats. There's no reason for the, sh for the unless there's like some really big weird twist where it's like, oh yeah, this entire time the person pulling the strings for everything was actually Shanks. Highly doubt this is going to go down in that way where the Straw Hats are going to have to fight against the Red Hair crew as like an actual enemy organization. That's just ridiculous. So it's going to have to be Blackbeard after this, you know, versus the Yonko. And that's going to set up, I think, this last big saga of One Piece. Um, because, you know, the Wano saga has been going on since Punk, since Punk Hazard, and then that's going to wind down and going to end after this arc is over, and then after this, I don't really see any other major saga before the final saga. There'll be a lot of story arcs, you know, that's like a saga is multiple story arcs, right? So, you know, there's going to be something involving Elbaf, and then, of course, Laugh Tale, um, you know, they got to find the fourth road Poneglyph. There's a lot of stuff they got to do, a lot of story arcs that's going to be included in that, but this final saga... It, it could easily kick off at the end of Wano with Blackbeard showing up, showcasing how strong he's gotten. Like, even, okay, disregarding the whole situation with, um, you know, Blackbeard maybe stealing Kaido or Big Mom's Devil Fruit. Just disregard that for a moment. Blackbeard might show up for other reasons, like to steal the Poneglyph, and while he shows up at the end of this battle, he displays how strong his crew is. Like, how strong they really are. Because we don't know that in full scope. I mean, we know Shiryu is a badass. We know that, you know, Avalo Pizarro and San Juan Wolf, they're like crazy, ridiculously strong. We know that, but we haven't really seen them in straight-up battles yet to the point where they can display their powers. It'd be really crazy if Blackbeard's crew shows up at Wano at the very last minute, and he just does something to display how strong they are, and the Straw Hats can't do anything to stop him, and he gets away with the Poneglyph or something, and then while Blackbeard's sailing away, he's like, Zeha! Come and get it if you can, Straw Hat. I'll be waiting at Laugh Tale for you. And then that's how Wano ends setting up this final saga of One Piece. That would that would work. That would definitely set the tone for the final part of this series, all right? That would definitely be one way you could do it. There would be other ways, but that would definitely be one way. Um, so, let's talk now about the situation with rocks, all right? So, Blackbeard and rocks, it seems like they have some sort of connection. Some people are throwing it out there that Blackbeard is Rox's son. Um, and others are just like, well, maybe not necessarily son, like a direct bloodline, but maybe Rox was Blackbeard's teacher, or not actual teacher, like, you know, Rox sat Blackbeard down when he was a little kid and just being like, alright there, I'm gonna teach you. No, rather, maybe 
Blackbeard just looks up to Rox as an inspirational figure, kind of the same way that, you know, Luffy's never met Roger, but he's inspired by Roger, okay? So, and since the whole thing is going on here in the story with Luffy and Blackbeard always being kind of like the flip side of the same coin, you know, like they both are the members of the Will of D, they're both seeking out Raf, uh, La Rafto, Lafto, whatever you want to call it, they're both seeking out the One Piece, they both have, uh, in terms of a philosophy, you know, like, you know, the, their age where pirates' dreams will never never end. That applies to Blackbeard, and that definitely applies to Luffy. Um, Luffy's the kind of guy that doesn't even kill people because he's afraid that he's like that'll that'll end their dreams for good if he just ends them right there. So that's the reason. That's the explanation Oda gave why Oda, why Luffy just never pummels somebody to death. You know, it's just like okay, I'm gonna beat you down, but you're gonna get at least a second chance. You can get back up and like like look at Bellamy. Luffy beat down Bellamy, but then Bellamy got back up and he tried to improve his life a little bit, and he got beaten. It took two beat downs for Bellamy, but now it does seem like Bellamy is starting to change his life around for the better, right? So, yeah, those are philosophies that they both definitely share. Uh, the direction in which they're taking it is is a little different, of course. Luffy is someone that definitely prizes all of his crewmates as, like, his his family, his, like, best friends, his Nakama, right? Um, it doesn't really seem that Blackbeard has the exact same philosophy in that regard. Um, you know, it's not that he hates his crew or he's just manipulating them to an end, um, but it, it, it's definitely more of just like, I'm the captain, you're my subordinates kind of relationship when it comes to Blackbeard and his crew. With the Straw Hats, it's definitely like, they're best buds, they're best friends, they're family. You know, like, yeah, Blackbeard doesn't really have that kind of dynamic, right? But yeah, uh, th that's the situation we have there with that. So I could see, like, Rox being Blackbeard's Roger, you know? So, and also, there was that thing when we got a look at Blackbeard's uh, bounty. If you, uh, you know, well, this was back at Chapter 925, but we, we saw it again. You know, this is Blackbeard's bounty right here. And uh, I actually didn't know about this when I made the bounty video, but uh, somebody actually let me know, a few people let me know, so thank you, that the reason why this number is what it is is apparently this is like the historical Blackbeard, Edward Thatch's bounty, if, you know, adjusted for inflation and uh, converted from, like, yen to berry, because berry and yen are kind of like an equivalent, you know, currency that Oda's doing here. So it's like if you were to take Edward Thatch, the uh, historical Blackbeard's bounty, adjusted for inflation, converted to yen, which is the same as berry, this is the number you would essentially arrive at, right? Now, when I was looking at it, because what Oda likes to do with a lot of these bounties is add little puns or little secret meanings to it there in the numbers, because what I think Oda does is the first two numbers are always the numbers that just represent, like, their overall bounty of how big it is, right? So, like, let's look at examples like Rogers, okay? I'm sure Oda probably sat down and is like, okay, Rogers' bounty is going to be 5.5 billion. And he could have easily just made it 5.5 billion even, right? There's really no, no real reason why the government would tack on those really weird numbers at the end. Just make it 5.5 billion, right? But I think while Oda was coming up with all these bounties and numbers, he's like, well, that's a lot of zeros. You know, it's like two fives and like eight zeros or something. So Oda was thinking, I'm going to have a little bit of extra fun with this. I'm going to add in a six, you know, and these other random numbers like Roger. I'm going to add a Roger. So Roger's name is in his bounty. Whitebeards has a four and a six. He Once again, you know, Oda could have easily made just Whitebeard's bounty a flat five billion, but he had to add the 46 million because she... Ro, Shiro, white, so white beard, right? That, that's what he does. So yeah, it makes sense that Blackbeard's bounty would be the same as Blackbeard's bounty from our world. Um, but also maybe Oda could have switched around some numbers to not maybe make it an exact amount, but just make it something so there is also a reference, a, 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 another meaning to it. And the meaning that I arrived at, and I admit this is stretching, but you know, going with the same, you know, theme here, there's, you know, two fours in there. Well, two she's in there. There's a four and then there's a seven. So four could be she, seven is she, she, which can also, you know, she, she. And then on top of just fours being unlucky numbers that mean death, you know, there's a reason why in Hunter Hunter, during the Hunter exam arc, Hisoka's number is 44. There's 44. There's a reason for that. It's it's double death because Hisoka's, yeah. So I was looking at it though and thinking Shishi could also mean there's a word in Japanese. Shishi is like one's teacher or mentor or master. So 
even if that's not Oda's intent, that's an interesting thing to find in there, right? You know what I mean? So even if it, Oda's like, no, I didn't plan that at all. I just literally just converted Blackbeard's bounty into Yen and then Barry, and then that was all it was to it. But, you know, people are like, find double meanings into everything. Yeah, I find, I feel like a kind of a conspiracy theorist when I'm doing that. It's just like, all right, so, you know, what's the deal with the six in this random number string? Okay, oh, that means this. So, yeah, probably reaching a little bit there. But um, it definitely does appear that Blackbeard and, and Roxty Zebek have a connection one way or the other. Um, I don't think they're, um, I, I, well, I personally don't think they're related by blood, but I will say that um, the ages do sync up. Because Rox was apparently killed and defeated, well, I guess those, well, I guess defeated first, then killed, uh, at God Valley 38 years ago. Blackbeard is like 40 years old right now, so the timing would definitely sync up for Blackbeard to be born before the events at God Valley a few years before that. Rox does not appear to me as, um, we don't know much about him really, but doesn't appear to be like the fatherly figure that's going to be like, all right, I'm going to take my son and I'm going to raise him up uh, in, in the seas. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be the situation there. There. Rock seems like the kind of guy that would be like, all right, I, I have a child with this random person, this random woman, but I'm not going to raise him. You know, I'm just going to leave him there. And we see Blackbeard in his backstory, and he just seems to be a child and just crying above a, you know, a, a crescent moon. Just, you know, my life sucks like an orphan, I would assume, right? Um, eventually, Whitebeard takes Blackbeard on his own crew, which there's a connection back to that because Whitebeard used to be on Rox's crew. So maybe after Rox was defeated at God, Valley, Whitebeard gets away. Um, he eventually learns that either Rox had an apprentice or an, a son. Might not even be a son like biological. Might be an adopted son. Who knows? Um, and Whitebeard decides to invite him on his crew as his son, and then Blackbeard eventually ends up betraying him, so that adds a whole new layer to that, really. Um, I mean, yeah, there's the situation with the last name. You know, it's Rox D. Zebek, Marshall D. Teach. So the last names are different, but you could explain that away with any number of things. Not the least of which being his last name is Teach. So it's like Rox taught him everything he knows. Or it could just be, we could go the same route with, like, maybe Teach was his mother's name, or maybe there was somebody else he looked up to that had the name Teach, or maybe he just picked it out of a hat. Who knows the reasoning for that, but just the reason why they have different last names, um, you know, there, there's any number of explanations for that right there. Um, here's a question for you, and you know what? I actually think I'm going to use a poll for this, because they have little I cards, you can make the polls. I don't use them too often, but you know what? I'm going to make a poll. Would you want Roxy Zebek to be alive in the current story of One Piece? Vote now. Yeah, because it's like Roxy Zebek is talked about from Sengoku's point of view as this ridiculously strong pirate. Back in the day, it was his era. You know, Garp and Roger had to team up together to beat the guy down. And uh, he was uh, apparently defeated and just, you know, eliminated at that point right there 38 years ago at God Valley. Um, you know, Sengoku seems to be pretty confident that Rox is dead. You know, that doesn't prove anything. That just means that Sengoku thinks he's dead. Uh, would you want this to be a situation where we find out we like a, we go through all these really strong opponents, you know, Kaido, Big Mom, all the Yonko, Blackbeard himself. And after all of this is over, it turns out that the final villain of all of One Piece is this Roxy Zebek character. Um, I think, you know, Oda's a really good writer. I think he could definitely spin it that way. Um, I would, I, I've mentioned this before in the reviews that that would give me a little bit of Kaguya vibes. Like, Kaguya was mentioned in Naruto in, like, the final arc. You know, it's like she's mentioned in the final arc and then, like, it, 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 it didn't, it's not like as soon as she was mentioned she showed up. It took a few, you know, dozen chapters after her first mention until she actually popped up as the final villain. But I don't think I'm the only one that felt like Oh, all right, so we set up Madara as this final villain for hundreds of chapters, and then all of a sudden, like, this Kaguya lady shows up. She's like, I'm an alien that absorbed chakra from a tree, and I can do different dimensional shit, and now I'm the final villain of the story. I'd be like, okay, now, 
Now, it's different from that in the sense of, like, we're not even close to the final arc of One Piece yet. All right, I mean, we we know about rocks right now at chapter 957. Well, even before that, chapter, like, 903, back during Reverie, we first get the name drop of rocks. We don't find out about what he looked like, at least in silhouette, and what his crew was all about until recently, chapter 957. Um, and One Piece is still going to go on for several years. So, I mean, it's not a bad time to reveal him now, and then, like, he could still show up, and just, like, he's at Raftal the entire time, like, ha ha ha, I'm the final villain! Like, alright, yeah, you could definitely spin that, like, the Straw Hats beat down Blackbeard and his crew, and they think everything's, you know, hunky-dory, and then, boom, rocks. Um, but, you know, I, I just, mm, that just does bug me. It bugs me in, like, the same way if we were to find out, like, Roger was still alive. Or, you know, not even, like, still alive, but it would bug me in the same way of, like, you know, uh, they arrive at Laugh Tale and there's, like, a ghostly image of Roger there. You know, just, like, I feel like, at least in the One Piece story, when a character is dead, they should just stay gone, right? Now, we don't know if Rox is dead or not. So pause that. I'm, I'm just saying, like, in that situation, it's just like, I, I don't think Oda's going to do that level of surprise with it. Um, so I think the more logical way to go about it would be Blackbeard either learning everything from Rox or following in his legacy. He's the one that's taking up the mantle. Sort of like, sort of like how it doesn't matter that Roger is dead, there's going to be another King of the Pirates to take his place. And that's Luffy. Sort of like how the Marines, we're, we're going to eliminate Goldie Roger, we're going to execute him, and then the King of the Pirates will be no more. It, 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 there'll always be someone that'll rise to that occasion. Might take a while in between, but you can't get rid of it forever. It's like inevitable that eventually there's going to be somebody that's going to carry on Roger's legacy and his will, and that's going to be Luffy. So I could see that in much the same way regarding uh, Roxy Zebek. It's just like, you know, uh, Garp and Roger teamed up and they beat down Rox. It's just like, all right, we did it, men. We did it. We defeated this evil scourge upon the high seas. He's gone forever. You know, that's Roger, of course, talking because Roger is a piratey pirate. So he's like, he's like, the scourge of the seven seas have been defeated, Garp. Now let's, oh man, what do you think Garp and Roger did immediately after that battle? Battle at God Valley, big epic brawl, you know, Whitebeard's there, Kaido's there, Big Mom's there, Shiki, Wang Zhi! I think Garp went up against Wang Zhi before they made it to Rocks. You know, they're just plowing through all of the Rocks crew. Wang Zhi comes up to Garp and he just fists Wang Zhi right in the face and just drops him. And they're brawling, they get to Rocks, Garp and Roger team up and they do like that freaking thing like One Punch Man, like when Bang and Bomb did that like rending key thing. They, they both launch a fist at the same time and they hit Rocks combo attack and they beat him down all of god valley gets obliterated in the process it's like so what do you want to do now you feeling like ice cream matey i could go for some ice cream right now yeah and so they went to baskin robbins and got some 31 they had 32 flavors at baskin robbins that's how epic they are oh uh, okay but yeah 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 as this big epic battle happens right they think rox is gone for good but he isn't because blackbeard comes up and and whether or not you know what honestly whether or not there's any blood connection to, to zebek and um and teach um he, he's still just as bad or he's getting the potential to be just as bad all right, because he's just like he's gaining a really strong crew of some of the most notorious pirates on in the Grand Line. He, he all the level six prisoners plus the crew he already had, which are dangerous in their own right. You watch Doc Q; he's gonna pull some stuff. You know, he's got all these really strong Devil Fruits at his display now. So even if you know they're not blood related, he's getting to the point where he's going to probably be just as big of a threat unless he stopped sooner rather than later, okay? And it seems like already he's rising to power and he's got this plan that if this plan comes to fruition, he would be as dangerous as rocks, all right? So that that's the situation there. Um, it, you know, it's going to probably be something very similar to the Alabasta arc where all throughout Alabasta, we always, we knew about Crocodile early on. And so all throughout Whiskey Peak, Little Garden, Drum Island, and then finally Alabasta, that arc itself, the threat of Crocodile was looming. You know, every now and then he would make his presence known. 
like he sends Miss All Sunday to Whiskey Peak. He talks to Sanji at Little Garden. It's just like, yeah, he's going to be the final villain of this saga. He's not in the spotlight just yet, but pay attention because he's going to do some really crazy stuff. And he's a really big bad villain here. Um, the last saga of One Piece is probably going to go along with that similar thing where it's like, let's say Blackbeard challenges the Straw Hats to come and like, like, like you know, meet me at Laugh Tale and we'll have the big epic final battle. And there's going to be other arcs in the intermediate, like they go to Elbaf or they go to the last island on the, that the log post points to and they have to find the fourth road upon a glyph. They have to do all this crazy stuff, right? There might be another Sky Island thing involved. You know, they're doing other stuff. But all the while, while the Straw Hats are doing other stuff, they're at least aware of the darkness maybe spreading around the world. They're aware of Blackbeard's influence. Like, when they go to Elbaf, maybe they might find out a little bit about San Juan Wolf at Elbaf. They might find out about how, yeah, San Juan Wolf was from here, he was a giant, and he was like a criminal that left this island years ago, and now he's on Blackbeard's crew, and we had a whole thing about how dangerous San Juan Wolf is. That would actually be a really cool way to do it. Go to different islands, and while you're doing that, learning more and more about uh, Blackbeard's crew and really just how dangerous dangerous these level 6 prisoners are. We found out a little bit about them from the Vivra cards, like Katarina Davon's backstory and the, the kind of stuff that she's into, uh, but we don't know about all of their backstories and stuff, so that'd be really cool if the Straw Hats like went to Elbaf, learned about San Juan Wolf. Maybe they at some point could... Maybe they might encounter um, somebody that used to live in the kingdom that Avaro Pizarro ruled over, you know, and then they'll turn, they'll, they'll explain of how dangerous Avaro Pizarro was, because we don't really know much about him, honestly, other than he was a cruel king in the north. Um, they find, uh, you know, someone that maybe, you know, like had a wife that was a victim of Davon, because Davon would, you know, find very pretty ladies and and then, you know, take their. <laughs> There's a limit to what I can do with YouTube now, currently, but I could just do, yeah, huh? <laughs> see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. Um, you know, they might just find out more and more about Blackbeard's crew setting up how dangerous they are, and then we get to the final battle, and it's like, okay, it's on. But yeah, let me know about that poll up there, what you, uh, what you feel about rocks being alive at the end of this story. Um... Oh, okay. I just thought of something. Like, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there. I don't even know how this would work, but let's say he is still alive. He would be old. He'd be really old. He would probably be, like, older than Rayleigh, you know, so maybe, like, early 80s, but that doesn't really matter. I mean, Rayleigh's 78. He's still a badass, right? But let's say Rox is still alive, and Blackbeard meets him, and then they you think for a moment they're going to team up, and Rox is like, you know, we're going to get the crew back together. We're going to raid the seas. And then Blackbeard takes out Rox. And he's like, well, like maybe Rox is like in hiding and he's he's trying to build his crew back up again. And he's getting like, let, let, we don't know the situation with like Silver Axe and Wang Ji. Um, there was a theory out there that they might be the zombies that were at Thriller Bark, the general zombies, because Captain John was there and he was a general zombie. And that's, that's fine. It's just all the general zombies are now like wiped out because, you know, ores crushed them and then all their shadows got removed. So that means they're confirmed to be dead. Like we know Captain John 100% is confirmed to be dead. Um, but as for the other ones, like maybe, maybe some of them were still alive. You know, I like to think that, that uh, Moria gathered all all of them together um but let's say uh you know and that would have made sense because kaido was their crewmate at one point moria got defeated by kaido so maybe moria was like i'm gonna gather together your previous crewmates it makes sense why they would be there it just means if they were then they didn't really have a chance to really do much of anything even as corpses you know captain john's corpse didn't really do anything but just drink a lot and let's say if, if silver axe and wang Ji's corpse were there then they got wiped out and they didn't get a chance to really do much of anything either so that's just kind of a lackluster moment but let's say they are still alive let's say they weren't the zombies on thriller bark let's say wang Ji and silver Axe and Shiki. We definitely know Shiki wasn't part of that on Thriller Bark. Shiki's probably still alive somewhere in the world. Let's say uh, Rox is trying to get his old crew back together. And he's like, it's been it's been 40 years, but I think it's time. It's time to bring the crew back together, right? And so they start gathering power. Blackbeard meets them. Like, he meets his hero, the person he idolized. And uh, what, what if Rox is, like, kind of a has-been? Like, he's still strong, but he's not as impressive as you think he would be. And then Blackbeard's like, okay, I'm gonna... Uh, wipes him out, and then takes his crew. He's like, alright, well, you're just a... You're a doddering old man. I'm the one that's gonna lead this new era. Say ha ha! That could be another way you could spin it. Like, he's still alive, but it doesn't matter. 
Well, I mean, it matters, but, you know, Blackbeard could just be like, no, I'm the one, not you. Your error is done and over with. I learned the best from you, but now you're no longer the best. So, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's another way to take it. I just came up with that off the top, so let me know how you feel about that. But anyway, yeah, um, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, prepare yourselves. Uh, I feel this chapter of One Piece this week is going to be pretty epic. We're going to finally find out what the deal with Odin's hair is. That's the only question I care about, Oda. All right, later, everybody, signing out. Smile, Barry. You don't smile enough.